Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear League Project, how the heck are you? I am about to share with you what I feel is some of the best footage of a ghost ever captured in my presence. Now, it's interesting as well because I was with Jeff Darty and several others at the Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary that was decommissioned about 10 years ago. And folks, if you want to see something spooky, like something right out of Saw meets Hellraiser meets the Blair Witch Project trial or something. I don't know. I mean, way scarier than that, but you should check it out. It's crazy awesome and spooky and definitely take your gear with you. Well, Jeff was talking about how he had been on a 10 day fast and he was experiencing all sorts of emotions and overwhelmed. He even had to go sit down in his car for a minute because the emotions were so overwhelming. He was just totally drained. And he even said he's going to stop doing paranormal investigations at these types of places because it drained him so much. But before this picture was taken, he was talking about how he saw this entity run in between his legs and just keep going like this, this dark entity. And earlier in the night, one of the tour guides was talking about how there is, no, it's actually Glenn, which thank you, Glenn, again, for giving me an opportunity to go out there. Because of Glenn, I had an opportunity to check out this location. And because of Glenn, you had an opportunity to check out this location. So thanks, Glenn. He was talking about how there was this um, prisoner that got killed out there that was basically a cripple and he was you know he'd run around from place to place well this dude in ghost form runs in between Jeff's legs and then we are talking inside of the I think it was the cafeteria which there's a lot of activity in that cafeteria and he was talking about the entity that was going in between his legs and this other guy that was out there on tour took a picture of me and and some other um, people that were with us here, and Jeff and a couple other, um, Jeff, Glenn, and a couple other people, I think. Well, anyway, you can see this image, this apparition, literally looking in between my legs. And I'm going to share this picture with you now. So I want to get your take on this. And I'd like to thank you very much for spending your time here real quick with me. This is just going to be a quick update. This is the image right here. Just look at that. It's like he's looking upside down at my crotch smiling <laughs> is that not spooky i mean you can see the eyes you can see the nose the mouth the chin and then i flip this upside down and in a minute i'll show you what it looks like when it's flipped upside down and zoomed in even more but it was just so bizarre because jeff literally moments before this said that he saw something run in between his legs we connected it to that entity that was talked about earlier with glenn then somebody takes a picture and boom hello so i thought that was quite odd what's your take on that and real quick i wanted to give a huge shout out to our sponsor halo the brightest most intense flashlight i have ever seen and tactical flashlights have you heard of murphy's law you probably have well have you heard that murphy's an optimist well he is you know when something could go wrong it just might especially if you're not prepared well have you ever needed something you could have had, should have had, but didn't? Like a good flashlight. In your car, in your bug out bag, with your camping equipment, in your drawer at home. Check out GadgetsWithLeak.com. GadgetsWithLeak.com. Check out GadgetsWithLeak.com for stout discounts for Leak Project listeners. An assortment of the best in the best. Halo! Everybody needs a good halo. So isn't this spooky? All right, now check this out. Look at the view that I had the night before the show. Oh, yeah, right there. Isn't that a little bit eerie? Pretty spooky, isn't it? Look at how excited I was there. I mean, just certainly ready to roll. <laughs> and this is the outside of Brushy Mountain State Pen. It looks like something literally out of a movie. What was that? The Shining? Oh, yeah. Well, guess what else some of the regulars have seen at this location? And just so you know, this location is actually built over a native burial ground. So add that to the mix. There's an experience that somebody had in the cafeteria. Actually, no, I'm sorry, not in the cafeteria, in the chapel, in the hole. There's a place called the hole. The hole is underneath the chapel. It's the basement of the chapel. And in the hallway or in the doorway as you're walking into the door, one of the gals out there saw what looked like E.T., literally. 
from the movie, what looked like a grave. And when I was told that, I didn't know that it was built on Native American grounds. And I said, was this built on Native American grounds? They said, yes, it was. So add that to the mix. I mean, just the whole area out there in the Smoky Mountains is, is spooky. Um, very nice people. And they're very aware of anybody that comes in their town. I'll let you know that right now. I mean, it's like getting into that area, I was thinking to myself, you know, if there was a war like World War III, that's probably, you probably want to be a local in that area. You'd probably feel pretty safe if you were one of the locals. But if you were an outsider, I mean, they're, they nice people, though. I will tell you this. Uh, very nice. Very friendly. Um, my, you know, I, I just did full-on suspension on the Astro van, all Bilstein shocks and everything. Well, one of the shocks somehow fell off on the back, and I was dragging a shock. And a very nice person from that area said, just down the street from the penitentiary that lives out there, said, hey, you've got a, a shock hanging on the outside of your van. Sure enough. And then somebody else said, hey, I'm going to help you. You know, I'll help you wrap that up. So this guy, very nice guy, he was just getting something to the store, said, here, follow me. Literally go to his house. He gets me this still wire to wrap up the, um, the shock until, you know, until I can get it repaired. And very friendly people out there. I just noticed that they're, it's, it's certainly not a tourist town. Let's just put it that way. Good luck finding a hotel in that area. You can probably find a couple bed and breakfast out here in Oak Ridge. Um, there's, you know, it's a bigger town. It's maybe, I'd say, 20 miles or so east, 25 minutes or so um, away from Brushy Mountain. And nice people out here. It's a little bit bigger town, you know, a little bit more relaxed. Another thing I discovered in this area, folks, is one of the largest uranium processing facilities in the nation is out here. And it's like in production right now as well. They're still doing work to it. I tested radiation levels around the perimeter of the area. And I've got levels all the way up to 0.16 microsieverts per hour, all the way down to 0 0.08, which is you know, not a sign of concern for me by any means. But I did see it fluctuate. I, I went to the visitor center and then I went around and, and checked out the, um, there's some like biking trails and stuff on the outside of it. But very nice facility. And they've got uh, public access where you can actually go in and I think they had 2,000 jobs and stuff. But the, the whole area out there in the Smoky Mountains, at least around the, the brushy mountain penitentiary, it's got a different vibe to it. You know what I mean? It's got like this old school um, energy. And also I noticed I, I could feel a lot of native energy, you know, from the burial grounds and stuff out there. And I think it's interesting how a lot of times when there's native burial grounds, a lot of weird activity happens around the, the grounds as well as sometimes things that are built on top of the grounds. You know, it could be a, a haunted hotel or a penitentiary. And looking at the actual facility, walking through this facility, realizing it's only 10 years old and seeing how dilapidated it was. I mean, it was insane that in just 10 years, it looks the way that it does. I mean, I would think, man, this has been here for 50, 60 years, just decaying. No, 10 years. And then I showed you the deep, you need to watch that whole video that I did if you haven't watched already, especially when I was in the D block because that's one of the newer buildings out there, and it's also the most dilapidated. I mean, we're talking paint falling off the ceilings, rusting outside of the uh, cages and on the inside of the cages. That was just the most eerie feeling I had in there. That's where I felt this one entity, this energy, and almost looked like he went into apparition form there for a minute, and he was in between, I think, two and three. Well, Jeff and I later did a Ouija board session there, and the camera started acting up, started acting very weird. It only picked up like 13 seconds worth of recording, and we did um, at least 10 minutes in that one area, in that one room that we think was this guy named Leroy, which, um, according to what we were told, was actually killed by inmates when he was pumping iron. And Jeff communicated with this dude, and Jeff was telling me that he told this Leroy guy that he used to be able to bench 400 pounds. So they kind of became, you know, a mutual respect in there. But this Leroy guy said to Jeff that he didn't want to leave. He was happy where he was at. And um, he didn't talk to me, but I think I, I certainly felt him and I saw that energy. And, and the thing that came into my mind when they talked about Leroy before I even heard anything about him was that he was like the head honcho of that place. He was the, you know, the alpha dog. 
And when you go in and look at that facility in the D block, you have these single cells that they would have to spend 23 hours in, and then they were given an hour a day in, uh, in an open area. But this open area was still caged in. So they weren't out in the public, you know, they didn't get public, or I shouldn't say public, they weren't getting access to the other inmates out there when they were, you know, playing basketball for an hour a day and enjoying the, the sunlight. They were literally in this confinement that had sunlight coming. I don't even know if it had sunlight. No, it didn't. It didn't even have sunlight coming from the inside. It was just this bigger area that I thought they used for maybe putting a whole bunch of people in. No, it was just one person, and that was that person's one hour a day. And then there was another place in that facility, not in the D block, but then in the the, the main area. Let me show you here again real quick. I'm just kind of in that facility that looks like a, something out of a horror film. Well, that facility in there, there was an area that looked like what reminded me of Hannibal Lecter's room in the movie Silence of the Lambs that was all mirrored off and stuff like that. And I got a real creepy vibe from in there, and I'm, it's happening again. And you could see like moisture on the inside of the windows, and, and it was all locked off, right? Well, come to find out, there was a, somebody left this in the comment section, there was a, that's where they, how they had the electric chair for a while. They, they had an electric, so that's, I mean, who knows how many people in that specific location died via electrocution by a chair. But the stories, the, the, the hatred, the anger, there was, um, there was certain, there was this one cell where this guy had a, he drew a big picture of Jesus. And, uh, you know, then, so Jesus on, on one side, but then he must have been uh, a, a Nazi or, or a neo-Nazi or something like that because he started writing, you know, there's all these racist comments next to it, which is just ridiculous. I'm thinking, oh, Jesus saves, but you're a racist. Okay, that makes no sense at all, but whatever. Um, anyway, I mean, it's just very eerie, you know, and, and I did my best when I was doing that tour to just keep things as light as possible because that's how I deal with that stuff, folks, is, you know, that, that's, that's how I cope. And I, I could feel the energy. I could feel the dense, the darkness, the, the, the anger, the loneliness, the chaos, everything. It was all sadness. It was all mixed in there. And I, I also did my best to leave good energy there that will help with the lost souls that need to find, um, you know, their own path. But Jeff, here's another thing that was very spooky. When, we, when I was walking around with Jeff for a minute and Glenn, uh, the, the gentleman that helped make this possible, uh, that, that did make this possible, at least for me, because he invited me out there and I never would have heard about it without, well, he had told Jeff to invite me, so I never would have heard about it without him. Really nice guy, and I hope you're watching this, Glenn. Thank you so much. May the force be with you. You're a good, you're a good person. Um, he, uh, where was I going with this? He, he talked about some of the stories and stuff that, that happened out there. But when, when we were walking with Jeff and I was walking with him for a minute, uh, Jeff heard that when we walked past this one cell in that building, Jeff heard this whisper in his ear and he, he could like fill the, the air on his ear. And I'm not going to repeat what this whisper told him to do to me because it was that graphic. And he said, he said, Hey, did you, you know, did you sense that? Did you hear that? You know, and, well, before he did that though, he said, so, so we walk past it as he hears it and we're walking around. And, and then I said, you know, I feel something around here. I feel, I feel something around here. He says, well, do you feel negativity? Or I was like, yeah, it's not freaking me out too bad. I mean, I said, it's just, you know, like an energy, I can feel it around here. And, and that, that area, that exact cell that I said, I felt that, that energy at was where something whispered in his ear, uh, telling him to do very bad things to me. So folks, I'm telling you, we live in the twilight zone. And it also reminds me, I want to bring this up real quick before I close out uh, the and, and you know, let's go back and look at this picture again, too. I want to show you this, this picture. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So in San Antonio, there is I mean, doesn't it look like his head is upside down? And he's like, literally looking up at me and when we when this picture was taken this was literally moments after and in during because this is when Jeff was talking about what this is when Jeff and I were talking to 
Glenn's friend or this other guy that I don't remember his name, but he was on the tour there, and he had these EVP boxes that were picking up all sorts of voices and stuff like that. And he has like an Ecolas box or something. I need to get one of those. But he, w- he was saying, uh, you know, we were telling, Jeff was telling him, and I was interacting, discussing what he saw go in between his legs. And then that picture was taken. Then we, we looked at the camera because this guy, the guy took the picture. And then we looked at the camera and he's like, check this out. And we're like, whoa. And they were the ones that said, do you see that? I didn't even see this at first. They said, do you see that thing looking up at you? And yeah, I see it. Halo. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Creeper, right? That's the creeper ghost right there. All right, let me see if I can find the, uh, I want to share with, this is cool too. I took the image and I, I flipped it around and I zoomed it in. I'm going to show it to you right here. I just have to get the window capture. Okay. Look at that. So you see I flipped it around. I see a nose. I see eyes. I see a forehead. I see a mouth. I see a neck. It's all there. Now, yes, I get it. You can look at the clouds and you can see the same thing. So this is all for you to decide. You want to call me, you want to call me a troll, a shape-shifting reptilian, you want to call me crazy, awesome. Just don't call me late for dinner if you're going to invite me. Halo! That's what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here with me. <laughs> and on that note, getting a phone call. So... I would like to say, have a fantastic day. Be excellent to each other. Make sure to click that link. Pick up those awesome tactical lights, flashlight. They've got this really cool like um, light for if you're needing to work or paint or something like that. It's like this big. You just set it down. It's like, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Halo, be the change you want to see.